Mary and Miss Christy here. We got through our first week. Yay! So hopefully it wasn't too bad. I've heard that some of you have been enjoying the remote online learning. So usually you can kind of get through what you need to do for the day and then you're done the rest of the day. So hopefully you haven't had any problems. If you've had any problems, just continue to reach out to us. I know some of y'all had some questions. If you didn't have access to something or had a question about the assignment itself, or didn't know how to upload a photo, just continue to reach out to your teachers and let us know so we can walk you through that. I've really enjoyed looking at the comic strips that you guys made, so good job on that. Week two is going to continue to talk about poetry. So last week we talked about sensory language and figurative language. And now we're going to continue to talk about that this week again, except you guys are just going to do some study island practice. So let's take a look at your packet this week. So this is reading fifth grade week two. First, you need to log into Google Classroom, which is where you should be now in order to see this video. Watch Miss Christie's YouTube video, which is what you're doing now. Check, check. And then after that, you're going to log into Study Island. Go to my classes like you normally do in class. You guys know how to do it. This isn't anything new. Then you're going to go to Figurative Language and Sensory Details Practice. And then after that, you're going to go to Idiom and Adages Practice. So there's two different practices that I want you guys to complete for the week. Make sure to watch and read the lesson. Most of the time you guys skip that, but since we're not in class, I want you to go over that and just make sure you understand the information. Then show your people what you got at home with game mode. You're allowed to do game mode. No problem there. Just make a 70 or higher. So continue to look at the explanation for every question that you missed wrong. So usually you guys get this homework packet for Study Island. These are all questions on Study Island. So now you can do that online at home. So I just want to quickly go over the information that's usually in the back, the lesson part. So everything that you need to know, first of all, when we talk about idioms, we've already talked about that. It's raining cats and dogs. Um, when pigs fly, those are all idioms, sayings that have been told to you that you've learned over the time and gotten used to what the saying means. So then we have adages and proverbs. They're kind of like idioms, but they're a little bit different because they almost sound like they could be true. So when pigs fly, that's an idiom. Pigs can't actually fly. Yes, I know there's some of you that will say, well, if we put wings on it and put it in a hot air balloon, then it's flying. Okay, I understand that. But Think about, in actuality, they can't fly because they don't have wings. So that's an idiom when something can't really happen, and it's a saying. It's raining cats and dogs. It really can't rain cats and dogs. Adages and proverbs are a little bit different. They're kind of like that saying, but they, are, they sound a little more true, and they're something that's been passed down from generation to generation, meaning you might have heard it from your mom and then your mom's mom and then your mom's mom said that. So one of the examples in here is practicing is the key to mastering a skill. That means like when you heard uh, practice makes perfect. Practice make perfect is something that is true, but that's also a saying that's been passed down from generation to generation and it means practice is the key to mastering a skill. So that's the meaning behind the phrase. Then in your packet, it also talks about imagery. So in the lesson for Study Island, it's going to talk about imagery. Remember when we talk about figurative language and imagery and sensory details, that's all talking about imagery. When the author is trying to create a picture in your in your mind they're trying to paint this picture and so you close your eyes and you can really see it so they're using your senses your five senses which are to smell to taste to touch to hear and to see so they're using keywords from those five senses to really paint a picture in your head 
Then the last bit of information, you have simile and metaphor, which we already talked about. Comparing two things, simile uses like or as, and metaphor does not use like or as. So all information we've kind of gone over before. Then we have some additional optional practice. So this isn't something that you have to do, but I would recommend it. And some of these things are kind of fun. This right here, the Anamana Wacky, Anamana Pia Wacky Libs, is something I used to do as a kid called Mad Libs. So the way to play this game is you take this and then you find somebody at your house and you ask them. You don't read them the story yet. You only ask them to fill in the blanks. So you're going to ask them, hey, brother, what is an adjective? So... I could say, hey, brother, what's an adjective? And he says, slow. And I write it in the blank. And then I'm going to say, okay, give me a color. And he says, purple. And so I put that in the blank. And then I said, okay, give me an onomatopoeia. And you can explain to that person, in case they don't know what it is, what is an onomatopoeia. Remember those comic strip words like boom, pow, snap. And so then they're going to put one in. And then once you have all these filled in by the other person, but you want to ask them. And again, don't read the story until the end. So you're just filling in the blanks, and then you read the story to the person, and it sounds really, really funny. So that's the whole purpose of this game. Another option practice is alliteration. So if you want a little more practice, remember alliteration is tongue twisters. She sells seashells by the seashore. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the letter T, and you're going to write a sentence. So mine was Tom the teacher tends to tickle tigers on Tuesdays. Then I'm going to go find my partner, who was Zach today, and I said, Zach, say this one time. And I say, say it as fast as you can. And then I check that box off where it says one time. Then I'm going to say, okay, now say it two times really fast, and then check that off. Now say it three times really fast, and then see if they can actually say it or if they kind of get tongue twisted there. The next page in the optional practice is oxymoron. So remember, oxymoron means kind of the opposite. So you need to find the opposite of laugh and put it in there. The opposite of tall, put it in there and see if that kind of makes sense. So look at these boxes down below after you fill in those top boxes to give you some practice. Down here are boxes that you have to check off and see which ones are are real and which ones aren't real oxymorons so like the first one says old news well those are opposites if it's new it can't be old so I put a check mark the one down here big mansion big and mansion mean the same thing they're not opposites so I put an X the next one says top floor so if it's on the top how is it the floor, because this is the top, this is the floor, so therefore they're opposites. So put a check mark, that's an oxymoron. When you go through all these boxes, after that, if you wanted to, there's a bingo card and you can play bingo. You just write it in the boxes and then you can play bingo with that. The next one is personification. So remember, personification is like a cartoon character, so you're giving that item or object like a pencil or a chair or a computer some type of person skills, some type of human characteristics. So first it wants you to, it says you're going to personify six objects, but first you need to brainstorm a list of at least seven verbs to describe things that humans can do. So you need to think of seven verbs and put them there in that bubble. So sing, dance, talk, walk, um, clean, take a bath, anything you can think of, it's got to be a verb, and you're going to put it in that box. So once you first put it in the box, six verbs, I mean seven verbs, then you're going to go down here and you're going to fill this in. So for example, I have an animal, and I just put tiger, then a household object, couch, and then you're going to continue to go down this list. Then you're going to take these and put a sentence with your seven verbs there at the top. So, for example, the tiger dances, but only to Michael Jackson music. The couch sings a song softly called Don't Sit On Me. So have some practice there. They should be kind of fun. Figurative language is usually a pretty fun thing. 
get familiar with those techniques because soon we're going to make our own poem. And some of you guys are familiar with that because maybe you like to write music and you might have already kind of written poetry, but in a musical form. So we'll do that in a few weeks. Enjoy the lesson. Do your best on Study Island. Reach out to us if you have any questions. And I will see you soon. Bye.